I definitely want to get the, the conservative's perspective. So Sean Hannity and friends, they decided that they wanted to contribute into this conversation. Let's see what they got to say. Uh, let's go to Sean Hannity in the spin room in Atlanta. Sean, what's your reaction? You know, uh, guys, in the history of modern televised presidential debates, I don't think America has ever seen anything right, like this. I, I wrote down some adjectives, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just read a few of them off to you. It was the biggest train wreck of any presidential candidate ever. He, Britt is right. From the minute he spoke the, uh, at the opening of the debate, he sounded awful. He started with speedy talk. He looked terrible. Maybe the worst part of all of this is when he wasn't even speaking, he was staring out like an empty vessel or <laughs> vacant, to use Martha's words. He was incoherent. This is after a full week of prep, mumbling, bumbling, stumbling, dazed, confused, struggling. You know, uh, he had a brain fart twice <laughs> during the debate. It was a, a disaster. Now, I'm oh. looking, for example, at the Drudge Report. Do y'all know that he prepped all week for this debate? They said that he was hunkered down at Camp David, that he was in his airplane hangars, that they had multiple different people from all over the world, some of the greatest debaters and, and greatest policymakers and the people that knew more about what he was doing than him was going in. And they were absolutely 100% training him. And they were working with him. And they had his hands. And they was giving him hand movement gestures and specific talking points and counters. And they rolled all of his notes out for him. And then they put the, head, the microphone in his ear like the Manchurian candidate. People were working with Biden, some of the greatest people. They had him flying on Air Force One and traveling with him. That, that's, what, that's what the news reports has been saying all week. They said Trump was still on the campaign trail, wasn't even tripping about it. Like, yeah, yeah, we're going to do what we do. They said people. Hey, Siri, stop. They said that uh, he was out here in these streets. He was out here in these streets. You're just a sassy little thing, huh? She going to tell me ain't nothing to stop here. No, you didn't. Was that AI working? Did y'all hear that? First, she's going to start talking to me. Then I told her to stop. And then she's going to say, ain't nothing to stop here. I ain't never heard that before. Y'all got them home pods? You know, you know, the big speakers and stuff? I got them all over my crib. I got them in here. Might have to unplug these home pods. I ain't never had Siri talking back to me. Hey, Siri, don't talk back to me. All right, get some control up in this mug. And the Drudge Report is saying Operation Replace Joe Biden. Uh, that's not good. The Border Patrol Union has come out and said, to be clear, we have never and will never endorse Joe Biden. Politico has a piece out right, right now saying Biden is toast, calling it now. Biden stumbles and rambles in the opening debate. Um, Operation Replace him in 130 days. This, the Democrats that I know that were texting me are in a state of complete, you know, they, they are stunned at how bad this went for him tonight. But, uh, you know, I'd like to, I wish it weren't so, it was almost like I was waiting at times for somebody to just throw in the towel. It was a no mas, no mas moment. It's over. It's done. He is too weak. He is too frail. He is a cognitive mess. He is not strong enough for what is the most difficult, toughest, hardest job on the face of the earth to be the president of our country. This is serious. It is significant. And, and I don't know how this plays out from here. To Donald Trump's credit, on the other end, he was dialed in. He did not take the bait. He took all the slings and arrows, the rehearsed lines of Joe Biden. He let it roll off him like water off a duck's back. And he stayed on message and was extraordinarily effective on, on pretty much every issue of substance they talked about. This is a historic night of, uh, at a level that I can't, even, I can't even measure tonight. Hey, Sean Hannity here. I agree. I think that, and Sean summarized it beautifully, and he broke it down, and he, and he basically said that, listen, this was a disaster of epic proportions. Not only did he put himself in front of Donald Trump, who was a marketing genius that has the ability to really communicate effectively to his base and to his voters, people were rooting for Donald Trump to win, 
and they were rooting for Joe Biden not to lose. That was the real narrative. That was the that was the heavyweight fight here today. They were rooting for. It was unlike what was happening with the Drake Kendrick Lamar thing, right? You got people on both sides, and you got people that were rooting for Drake to lose, and you got people that were rooting for Kendrick Lamar to win. It was Joe's to lose, and it was Trump's to win. People were waiting for Trump for Trump to just throw the haymaker, and all he did was just let let Joe tire himself out. That's all he did was let Joe tire himself out. It was like looking at a heavyweight boxer that was over the hill. You don't want to see that. You don't want to see that. I don't want to see it. Look, look, look. I like people to retire before it's too late. If I ever get to the point to where I just become completely ineffective as a content creator, I'll let it go. If I start mumbling over my words, if I start, I don't want people to remember me <laughs> at my worst. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I want you to remember me for the times that I cussed you out with all of my ability and all of my cognitive functions. I want you to get the best of me. I, if I'm not continuing to get better, if I get to the point, if I get to the point to where I'm just stealing money from the NBA, I'm just going to team to team to team, get me up out of here, bro. Let me retire shooting my 60. Let me retire putting up 60 like Kobe. Don't catch me. Don't, don't push me out. Don't push me out. Let me walk away with all of my faculties and let me ride into the sunset. But this is bad. People are going to remember Biden. People that have never seen Biden. New voters that are unfamiliar with his track record and the fact that he's a lifetime politician is going to watch this and their reaction to this, their first time witnessing Joe Biden on the stage and debating, their first time voting, this is what they're going to have to remember him by. I don't know what everyone's talking about. I thought Joe did a great job. <laughs> and I think the Democrats should absolutely keep him as the nominee and run him against Donald Trump. I think it's going to work out fine. Something happened tonight, which I never thought could possibly happen. It was so bad for Joe Biden that I felt bad for him. Yep. I didn't think I was capable of feeling empathy for Joe Biden, but that's how bad it was. And this is because they've hidden him yeah. for four years. This was a surprise to some of us that were maybe not paying attention. But for us in the news business, that's why expectations were this low and expectations were so low. And he did the one thing he couldn't do. He discombobulated in minute 13 of the debate. That's when everyone was paying attention. Everybody was in shock by his ashen face and his hollow voice. And then at minute 13, he just completely falls apart and comes up with, we beat Medicare. And, you know, that was the worst part about it. The worst part about this whole thing is at 9 o'clock, it was still people trying to tune in. When the debate started, it was people still gearing up. Even when we was watching it, we, we had the watch party popping off. Shout out to Mika. We was watching it, and we didn't hit the apex of what we was watching until, like, minute... 10, 12, then people really started to file in and they were starting to really get, get involved in what was going on. And by the time minute 12, minute 13 hit, people were just now getting their popcorn. And for some people, they was just getting comfortable. They seen that, okay, this is what the bait format is going to be. Candidates starting to get comfortable. Then right at that very moment, he just completely had a brain fart. He didn't know what his words was. He was stumbling. He said, a bunch of billionaires or trillionaires or the zillionaires. And at the time, talking about taxes and just completely fumbled and just disintegrated. And from there on, it was a disaster for the rest of the way out. And Jake had to save him. And, and CNN did a great job. The abortion issue was a draw. Shout out to CNN. Can you believe that? Trump fought the abortion issue to a draw because he was hammering partial birth. January 6th, Trump comes out with the line... I didn't think this was even possible to spend January 6th this well. He said, on January 6th, I gave you low taxes, a strong border, and low energy prices. That was a very effective line. He said, illegals are living in luxury buildings and veterans are out on the street. Again, he killed them on immigration, brought immigration into the forefront of almost every answer. He would be like, oh, actually, 85 seconds left. The question was about child care. 
back to the illegals. But, you know, that was an effective thing. You never fired anybody, Joe Biden. You never fired anybody on the border. You never fired anybody on Afghanistan. Joe Biden looked so weak at that moment. And then, line of the night, I've seen your swing. You're not a six handicap. <laughs> uh, and then Trump actually became the bigger man and said, let's not argue like children. Uh, you know, Trump did not have the perfect night, but it was an eight out of 10, and Joe Biden fell apart. Click here. That's pretty insane to think that it just went that bad, that both Democrats and Republicans can agree, and even CNN. CNN is probably the most liberal organization that we've ever seen in our entire lifetime. Actually agree that he completely fell apart. Completely. It is no way in hell that you can even spend this.